Synthetic DNA is no different from uh, normal natural DNA. Uh, it is exactly the same substance and it ha does exactly the same thing. Uh, but over the last more than 50 years, uh, scientists have actually learned how to make DNA in the laboratory. So what we do is we actually use synthetic DNA, DNA that we make in the laboratory. Um, and uh, to do this, what we, what we use is an automated DNA synthesizer. Uh, these are machines where what you, can, what we, what you do is you build the, the DNA base by base, one by one, on the machine, and you program the sequence on that machine. And you get out synthetic DNA, and you can use that synthetic DNA as a building block to create structures. Our technique involves basically using uh, shorter DNA building blocks that we can make using the DNA synthesizer. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these building blocks and add them one by one to one another. And the trick here is to use a, a, an enzyme called DNA ligase that is sitting in the medium and is able to glue together these DNA strands that we're adding one by one. Uh, we can add repeating strand, repeating strands, repeating building blocks. So you can have A, B, A, B, etc. Or you can add a third or a fourth building block to make it even more uh, complex. Uh, it depends on the application. It depends on what you want to do. So what we do with these DNA strands after we make them is we use them as scaffolds to build uh, to build other objects, other complex objects. So for example, we can create DNA nanotubes using the scaffold. But now these nanotubes, we can modify every part of that nanotube independently because we can control how we make that scaffold strand that we had in the first place. And moreover, this method allows us also to repeat uh, the addition of a certain sequence, which means at the end of the day, what you get is uh, a complex object, but you can make it with very few building blocks, um, as opposed to some current technologies in DNA nanotechnology, which use hundreds of strands in order to make a complex object. So we're hoping that this will actually uh, help to make DNA nanotechnology a bit more scalable, a bit more commercially applicable and practical.